Hello everybody, Eric here with some comic books. Uh, we had uh, some issues in my family, so I didn't get to the comic book shop for a few weeks. So I've got three weeks worth of comics that we're going to cover today. So they would be, let me look at the calendar, comics from January 4th, January 11th, and January 18th. Uh, and I've got the floppies sort of separated by each week. And then the collected editions are just all together. But uh, let's get into it. So these are the books that came out January 4th. For me, not all the books in the world. Stillwater, issue 17 from Image Comics, written by Chip Zdarsky. Fantastic book. Can't tell you anything about it. You need to read it. There's twists and turns, and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's really wild. Then we have Earth Divers, Kill Columbus, issue four from IDW. This is written by Stephen Graham Jones. Heh, I've got a flashlight shining, and we're getting a lot of glare there on the cover. So I'll have to tilt it a little bit, one way or the other. Um, even though this is issue four, I haven't read any of it yet, because I'm that far behind and further. But uh, it's Stephen Graham Jones, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. Then we have Vampirilla vs. Red Sonia, issue 3 from Dynamite, written by Dan Abnett. Great, great writer. I like that cover. Kind of cool. I did not go through any of the covers on the shelves to get look for alternates or anything. This is just, I got whatever they put in my file. Um, and that's not a bad choice. I kind of dig it. Vampirilla and Red Sonia going at it. That was it. That was all the floppies, anyway, that came in for me on January 4th. Now we're going to move on to January 11th. And I got Moon Knight, number 19, from Marvel Comics. Uh, one of my favorite characters. Been a really wild series so far. Uh, the Human Target, book 10. Of 12, this is from DC. It's a black label, and it's uh, there's the back, and it is um, kind of a DOA. If you've ever seen either version of that movie, where the human target has been poisoned and he's just got a short amount of time to figure out who killed him, but it's all taking place in the DC universe. Then we have what number? There we go. Book two. Danger Street, book two. This is another DC, black label. Um, and I have not read the first one, so I have no idea what it's about. But it does have characters that I like, so that's why I picked it up. Eventually, I'll catch up on my comic book reading. And you won't have to hear me just keep saying, haven't read any of it yet. But you are going to hear it a little bit more. This is Batman and the Joker, the Deadly Duo, book three. Another DC, another black label. Pretty freaky looking cover. There's the back. And I have not read the first two issues yet. But uh, hopefully it's good. I've been liking most of the black, the black label stuff. I'd say they're at 90% hits for me from what I've read. And then... Batman Urban Legends number 23. This book is coming to a close. I don't know if this is the last issue. It could be because we've got a part two of two, a part three of three, a part four of four. This might be it. Interesting. Uh, but this is the anthology book. Batman anthology book, four stories. We've got one featuring Nightwing, one featuring Batman and Robin. And Arkham Academy, and another one that's just Batman. Um, and I don't mind that this is ending because I'm trying to cut down on my monthly books. And it's been good, but it's nice to, it's eight bucks that I can use for something else. All right, that was it for January 11th. Now, January 18th. Yesterday, uh, we have Harley Quinn, the animated series Legion of Bats, 
issue four from DC Comics, based on the animated series on HBO Max, the R-rated animated series. Uh, I haven't read uh, any of this series yet, but the previous mini that they did based on the cartoon was was really, really good. And I love the cartoon, so hopefully that will be worth it. You know what? I'm going to put this... I'll put this last for the floppies. All right. This is Barbaric Hell to Pay, number one from Vault Comics. Barbaric has been a wild ride. There was the original, I think, three-issue miniseries, then a one-shot, then a two-issue miniseries. I believe it was two issues, maybe two or three, and now another Barbaric series. But it's a lot of fun. Conan the Barbarian-esque um, except that this character has to do whatever he's told to do or whatever quest he's, whatever request is made of him, as long as it's ethical. But he has this psychotic, talking, bloodthirsty axe. Uh, it's fun. Good stuff. Then we have Nightfall Double Feature, number two from Vault Comics, featuring the Cemeterians. Two feature stories, 64 pages. Horror's Finest, that's what it says on the cover. Um, I don't know if this is an anthology or if the two stories continue in each issue because I have not read the first issue yet. What are you going to do? And then we have West of Sundown, number eight from Vault. This is their horror vampire western. Um, and see, again, this is how far behind I am. I haven't read the first issue of this. I'm trusting people that this is good because I've been getting it every month and I have not read the first issue, which means I'm at least eight months behind in reading my comics. And yet I still keep getting them. All right. This, I'm very excited for this. Um, this is a reprint of a three-issue miniseries from way back in the day. Um, I've been trying to find this miniseries again. I had it when it came out. And haven't been able to find it. I mean, I've been looking like super hard. But every once in a while, I'd look for it. But now it's all reprinted, collected in one stapled book. Uh, and they are calling it Avengers 2, T-W-O, Wonder Man and the Beast. This is from Marvel, and uh, it collects Avenger, uh, no, Avengers 2, Wonder Man and the Beast 1 through 3, because uh, I think they did Avengers, Wonder Man and the Beast, and then they did 2, maybe, I don't know, I don't remember, but Wonder Man and the Beast, a great pair, they're good friends, they have fun adventures, uh, it'll be fun to reread this story from back in the day. Um, they're almost as fun as Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. But that's it. That's it for the floppies. Now I've got some collected editions and then something else. Uh, so this came out actually the last week of December. I couldn't pick it up at that time. But this is Superman Red and Blue and it col from DC Comics. It collects... Will it tell me? It does not tell me on the back cover. It collects a bunch of issues of Superman uh, 1 through 6. And this is one of those books that's basically, well, kind of red, white, and blue. Shades of blue, shades of red, some grays. But... Um, and it's an anthology book, so it's just a bunch of different stories, different artists, different writers, all sorts of cool stuff. And apparently it was nominated, 2022 Eisner Award nominee for Best Anthology. But I dig Superman, for the most part, uh, and this seems like a good book to get just a, a wide range of Superman stories. Now here's a book very, very excited about. Uh, it is the sequel, the long-awaited sequel. It's one of my favorite 
very short runs on the Fantastic Four. There was three or four issues that brought us the new Fantastic Four. And it was uh, the... I think uh, Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, and The Thing were all kidnapped by the Mole Man. Maybe all four of them, but I feel like the Human Torch wasn't. Uh, but he needed they needed help. And so Spider-Man, Joe Fix-It, the Grey Hulk, Ghost Rider, and Wolverine became the new Fantastic Four. And they went and rescued uh, the original Fantastic Four. Art Adams was the artist. He's an amazing artist, especially when it comes to monster stuff. Uh, I do not recall who the writer was. But anyway, that's all leading up to the new Fantastic Four, Hell in a Handbasket. Uh, this was a new miniseries, and this reprints issues one through five, the entire miniseries, uh, written by Peter David, who's a great writer. But um, And it takes place, I believe, it's supposed to slot in immediately following the events of that Fantastic Four story. So, but I'm very, very excited for this. I love Peter David as a writer. I love this Fantastic Four team. So this is this is going to the top of the pile. Not that that means much with all the piles I have. All right, then we have Public Domain, Volume 1. Past Mistakes, this is from Image, written by Chip Zadarsky, and um, this is about a comic book artist who created a character who is now in the public domain. Um, well, it says, based on the hit comic is the phrase that has haunted comic book artist Sid Dallas for decades. His super career superhero creation the domain has spawned movies toys games and a whole lot of money but he doesn't own the thing he created and now his son miles is ready to go to war with the company at the heart of his family's misfortune public domain is the eternal struggle of corporate greed art and the constant struggle between the two brought to life by multiple eisner award winner chip zadarsky um so there are a lot of uh, how do i put this uh, so basically Marvel owns all the character, all the Marvel characters. doesn't matter who created them. Uh, DC owns most. Some of the Vertigo stuff might be owned by someone else, by the creators. I'm not sure about that. But, uh, but so you have things like, you know, Superman has made so much money and the creators of Superman sold him to DC for a hundred bucks or something, you know, and they died. At least one of them that's dead was penniless. Um, you know, Stan Lee didn't own any of the characters he created. Same with Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, any of these. And so a lot of these creators basically have, have fought for, to get a piece of the pie for lack of a better way to put it for their creations. You know, when uh, all these Marvel movies are coming out, and uh, Ed Brubaker created the Winter Soldier. He didn't create Bucky, but he did create the Winter Soldier. You know, he doesn't see a dime for that character being used in any of the movies. Um, and there's a lot of a lot of people that think that they deserve, that the creators deserve, again, a piece of the pie. I'm a little torn. I think if you're work for hire... You go in, you know you're working, you're creating something for a big company. You know that going in. You're not going to own it. You're not going to get a piece of it. You're being paid to do a job. On the other hand, if the company is making millions and millions and billions and billions of dollars off something you created, even though it was for them, I think they could share the wealth a little bit. Let's see what... Uh, what form the argument takes in this book. A little soapboxy there. And then the last um, collected edition, I didn't even take the time to take the uh, shrink wrap off of this. It is The Monkey Prince, Volume 1, Enter the Monkey. This collects 
issues one through six of the Monkey Prince. It's from DC. I read the first issue or part of the first issue, and uh, it was fun. I liked it, so I figured I'd go ahead and get the collected edition. Um, there's the back cover. I think I think he has a human form. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I read it. And then he becomes the Monkey Prince. And he's in the DC Universe. He's part of that whole actual DC Universe. And then just a couple... Oh, no. You know what? We'll save that. This is the thing I picked up. I've been eyeballing it for a while. I'm going to take the price tag off. It's kind of like, you know, when you're giving somebody something for Christmas. You don't want them to see the price tag. Not that I'm giving this to anybody. Um, but this is another one of those Funko cover pops. Um, and I will be taking it out of this box, but this is Electra. It's the Daredevil Electra. So this is a cover from Chip Zdarsky's run. And then I'm trying to avoid that light from the flashlight. There's the Electra Funko pop. Um, you know, posed like the cover. There's the back of it. Uh, I really dig these. So this is the fourth one that I have. There's a couple others that I think are really cool. I'd love to get. There's a Doctor Strange one, but I think it was an exclusive for some place, so it's difficult to find at a what I consider a reasonable price. There's a cool Batman one, um, but I like these. They display very nicely. All right, and then finally... Uh, I got the free Marvel calendar that they give out every year. Um, it's just a, just a simple little calendar. Shows some Marvel comics and gives you the dates. Normally, this is what I write all my bills on. I would have it hanging right over here. And I write down, every month, write down when my bills are due. Uh, but since I didn't have it, I bought a sort of a retro Marvel calendar at Walmart that's hanging there. You can just barely see the corner of it right there. Um, so, so I don't know what I'm going to do with this one now since I'm already using that one. I'll have to hang this up somewhere. And then finally, uh, just a few weeks late, it's a little, uh, I've already ordered from this cause I looked up online, but this is the Marvel previews from the end of December. Since I didn't have it and I wanted to place my order, I had to look up online what was coming out, what was in this. Uh, but I still want to look through it, read about the stuff I actually ordered, um, see if there's anything I missed. That is it. That is what I picked up today. It encompasses three weeks worth of comics. Uh, my question for you for this video, very easy to come up with, is what do you think about uh, the work for hire practices in the comic book industry. We're not going to get into other industries. Um, as I said, technically, on the most technical level, if you are work for hire, you go to Marvel, you are the writer or the artist, and you're simply being paid to produce pages of writing or artwork, whatever it is, and you know, you know going in, whatever you do is going to be owned by Marvel. Well, it's, it's hard to say that you have a leg to stand on when they start, when that character takes off and they make tons of money on it. Um, but on the other hand, so, I mean, technically, if it came down to it, I would have to fall on the side of, from like a legal standpoint... I would have to fall on the side of the company. They hired you to do a job. You did that job. You were paid for that job. They technically don't owe you anything else. But, as I said, I'm just rehashing what I said earlier. If you've made billions of dollars, you can give 1% to the people that created that. Because... You know the people taking home the paychecks aren't the creatives. And uh, now I don't know the entire structure. Sometimes the creatives move up. I don't know that the, the person at the top at Marvel, or in this case now Disney, 
you know, if they have a creative bone in their body, you know, what, where would they be? What would they do if they didn't have the writers and the artists and, and all of the creative people? So yeah, maybe you made the, maybe you made the smart business decision. Um, nobody knew Venom was going to take off. You know, it's always the hope. I assume the writers and creators just thought it was a cool character. It was an interesting story. Um, so I, I think the people at the top need to look at how they treat the creators. And if they're making tons and tons, you know, share it. Share the wealth. Um, but again, technically, completely from a technical standpoint, you have a contract. If that contract is fulfilled, then, you know, you really, you, you can't complain reasonably, legally. Maybe reasonably you can. Legally you can. But this is why Image was formed uh, with Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, uh, Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri, Eric Larson, Will Portacio. Are those all the originals? Um, you know, they left the big two to form their own company where I believe still everything is creator owned. They're essentially a publisher. They're a third party publisher. Um, at least that's how they started out. I think that's still the case. So Robert Kirkman owns The Walking Dead. You know, of course, Image is getting their cut, but Robert Kirkman owns it. He's the one that has the rights to sell it to TV, to be made into a TV show. Uh, Chip Zdarsky owns Stillwater, I believe. That's still the case. Uh, so there are publishers now. I don't know about Dark Horse. Dark Horse is a small publisher. I don't know if they're, they let their creators own their stuff. Um, but anyway... My question is, what's your opinion on all of this? Do you think if you're work for hire, you should just shut up and do your job and take the money you're paid? Or do you think these creative people should get something if their creation takes off and the company's making a ton of money? Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, let me know if any of the stuff I picked up catches your eye. If you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Don't know what we would spoil, but just leave a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here on my channel. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is ericsmith5757. That's Eric with a K. E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That's all I have for you this week. So until next week, read more comic books.